Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. And for once, this is not going to be an unboxing. I am going to kind of format this video like a winter favorites video, but this is ultimately just going to be like a life update thing. And all of the things that I'm basically going to update you guys on are my favorite things so far this winter. So I have got a lot of things to catch you guys up on. Uh, you should probably get like a snack or at least like a beverage and buckle up for this video. I've got a lot of things to talk about. This is probably not going to be super bookish, but it's basically going to be explaining kind of what's been going on in my life for the past six weeks, why I haven't really been uploading anything except for unboxing. So let's jump into it. I'm going to start basically with kind of like the biggest things and then work down to actually like trivial material things at the end. So if you just want an update, I'll kind of get through that at the beginning of this video and then we'll get into more like stuff at the end of this video. Does that make sense? Let's just start. So the very first thing that I would like to talk to you guys about that is a favorite of mine is my husband. I got married this winter. It was kind of spontaneous. It was kind of quick. We kind of knew that was how it was going to go anyway, but I have kind of a long convoluted story that led up to that. I'm basically going to give you guys kind of the TLDR version of this whole past six weeks of my life because it has been a doozy. So back on December 2nd to 3rd, this happened at midnight, um, I got the phone call that nobody really ever wants to get. Um, I got a phone call from my then fiance, uh, Randy, saying that he was in a very, very bad tractor trailer accident. That is actually what he does for a living. He's a CDL driver. He drives like an 18 wheeler big rig truck and he was in a very bad accident and I needed to meet him at the scene or they were going to be putting him in the ambulance to take him to the hospital. And that's all I really knew. So that was at like midnight. So I hopped in my car, raced to go find him. He ended up calling me on the way and saying that they were transporting him to the next county overs um, hospital. And long story short, um, he broke his neck. Uh, we didn't really expect that. Like it was still a very like traumatizing thing to walk in. He had like a huge gash on his head. So he was covered in blood. He was in a neck brace in the ER. It was, that's an image that is burned into my mind forever that I wish I didn't have in my mind. But um, he wasn't really in any pain or anything. I think he was kind of in shock at that point, but uh, they did a whole bunch of x-rays just because he did have like a head injury and everything. And they found that he fractured his C2. Um, and in case you guys didn't know anything about like spinal injuries, that's a really bad vertebrae. C2 is your second vertebrae from your skull. And that's basically one of the worst ones that you can injure just because if you affect the spinal cord at that level, that high up, um, you're talking like full body paralysis and like full body issues, but he didn't have any sort of numbness or tingling. He could move everything. So we got transferred from the ER to the neurotrauma intensive care unit and spent the night and the full next day there just basically working with the neuro team, the trauma team and everybody. We, there was a lot of x-rays, there was a lot of scans and whatnot. Um, and basically we got to leave the next day and he spent the next six weeks in a neck brace and that was it. Um, I will be forever grateful for whatever was watching out for him. Basically he should never have walked away from that accident. Um, his tractor trailer was totaled and it takes a lot to total a tractor trailer. Um, so he should not have walked away from that accident. He shouldn't have even walked out of the hospital, but basically, um, he just chipped a piece off of the C2 and they needed to immobilize his neck and make sure that it stayed straight and perfectly lined up for the next six weeks. So he basically lived in a neck brace, um, 24 seven for the past six weeks. And that's basically what I've been dealing with. Um, so this was basically all through the holiday season and into the new year. Um, and that was also kind of the wake up call slash the kick in the butt that we needed to get freaking married. <laughs> We've been engaged for two years. We've been together for seven and a half years. We bought a house together six years ago. Like it's been a fairly permanent relationship in my life, but I think having like a near death experience is kind of the wake up call that anybody would need to kind of like finally tie the knot. So we did. January 10th um, is when we got married. Uh, I'm not sure when you guys will be seeing this. I'm filming this on the 12th. Um, but that was also the day that he went and had his final follow-up appointment and got his neck brace off, got his okay to return to work. And we are finally back on a normal life schedule. And he has no physical therapy. He has no, like, he's stiff, obviously, because he hasn't used his neck in six weeks, but he has really no pain. I am just forever blessed and grateful to still have him in my life. And now to be able to call him my husband, oh, it was so exciting. We literally just did a very small private ceremony, like with our family and everything. Um, 
I've mentioned this in previous Q&A videos, neither of us really wanted a huge wedding in the two years that we've been engaged or the like over seven that we've been together, we've both kind of discussed that we never really wanted to spend thousands of dollars on a wedding. Um, it was never a really big priority for us. We bought a house together. So that was kind of like the big permanent step that we took a long time ago. And for us, we just really wanted like a private personal thing between the two of us. And we are planning on taking like a big honeymoon this summer. So that has been kind of the bulk of the reason of why I have been missing and not uploading. I was basically just really focusing on living life and being with him, taking care of him. Um, it did mean that he was out of work for six weeks. It did mean that he couldn't drive or really do anything or lift anything. So I've kind of been picking up that slack and doing all of the errands and all of the household things and the appointments, like getting him to appointments and stuff. So that's basically where a lot of my extra time has gone for the past month. And also this was also during the holiday season. So we were also working on like doing all the Christmas shopping and preparing for Christmas. We hosted Christmas at our house this year. So there was a lot of like prep of like cooking and baking and cleaning. Um, all of the normal holiday stuff on top of dealing with a broken neck fiance. So it's been a stressful past six weeks, but I'm also really, really glad that I kind of made the decision to step back from constantly filming, constantly doing stuff in the book community just to really focus on being with him and having him still in my life and being grateful for that and getting married. It was really exciting. I have like a second ring on now. I have a husband. It's weird. That's going to take so much getting used to because he was my boyfriend for so many years. I called him my fiance for so many years. Saying husband makes me feel like an adult. Like all of a sudden it's very different to me. So that's been amazing and exciting. And I hope that you guys kind of understand that that took the priority of all of my time in the month of December and half of January. So first favorite thing is husband. I asked if he wanted to film this video with me. I don't know if he will ever really want to be on my channel. Um, I kind of am trying to keep like my personal life, like my family and friends somewhat separate from my booktube life. But for now, it's just gonna be my face. I hope you guys are okay with that. So moving into another thing that took up a lot of my time on top of all of that, um, the next thing that I want to talk about that is actually a favorite of mine, and I feel incredibly blessed and grateful to be able to say that, is my job. I work at a local animal rescue. I've been there for about a year and a half now. I went through like a quarter life crisis, um, like two years ago, and quit my job that I absolutely hated and finally decided to get back into the field of working with animals. Um, and I got hired at a local animal rescue just as a basic caretaker, which is generally just a glorified janitor at that point. <laughs> For anybody who doesn't work in the animal field, unless you are some sort of specialist, like a veterinarian, a trainer of some sort, some sort of like zoologist or anything, if you work with animals, like hands-on with animals, like whether that's in a barn, in a training setting, like in a zoo, anything like that, 90% of your job is poop. <laughs> like I know people think that it's all fun and snuggles and animal playing and petting and everything. Most of it is cleaning. Um, so, that's kind of what I did. And honestly, as horrible as that sounds to most people, I was ecstatic. I was literally getting paid to work with kittens and puppies and cats like all the time. And it was the best work environment for me. And over the past year and a half, I've kind of started working more and more in the veterinary clinic of our rescue. The one that I work at specifically has a whole veterinary clinic in it. We are one of those rescues that does like low cost spay and neuter clinics for like the public. So we have a full surgical and veterinary suite in the rescue and I have kind of been working closer and closer with the vets on site. Um, and I have been starting to take over doing the medications for most of the cats. I work primarily with cats, which has been very, very cool. But recently, more positions have kind of been opening up. We've had a lot of people quit or go to different jobs recently. So I've been training a lot of people to replace my caretaking position so that I can step up to be a full-time meds person, like medication administering human being. And again, to most people that may not be very exciting, but for me doing hands-on veterinary stuff is like a dream come true. I basically, when I quit my job, was planning on just getting a really crappy part-time job so that I could go back to school and start either a certification to be a vet tech or start the veterinary school process. But I was dreading it because your girl's already got student loans from before and I really didn't want to add on to that. So I basically wanted to get my foot into the field to see for sure if it was something I want to do. And this has kind of opened up the doors for me to do what I want to do without having to spend all the money for school because I'm working very closely with all of the vets on site and getting 
endless like valuable experience in the like veterinary medicine field and it's amazing so that's kind of what has also been taking up a lot of my time i've been working a lot more hours to train replacements for me and to do more of the med so i am turning into a night person now because i am kind of like the nighttime meds rounds person so like i go in at like four and i leave at like midnight so that on top of broken neck fiance on top of all of his appointments and preparing for the holidays has also been taking a lot of my time and as i'm filming this that hasn't really changed we have a couple people hired but it's still a lot of hours but i'm loving it so i again will be super grateful forever to be able to say that one of my favorite things in my life is my job not many people can say that but I don't dread going into work every day. Like that's such a blessing in my life and I am so grateful for that. So there's that. And then that is going to lead me into the last update thing that I wanna talk about as far as the past six weeks have gone. In case you guys have not seen the past like six months of my videos, um, I adopted a kitten. I ended up bringing home a tiny malnourished runt of a kitten to foster from work and go figure, I foster failed. I adopted her. <laughs> Everybody saw that coming. Like that was a surprise to literally nobody, including myself. Um, but she is making this list again. I'm pretty sure I made a favorites video, including her in the fall as well, but she is still the light of my life. Like I know you can't like pick favorites of pets or anything and she's not a favorite pet, but just right now she is still the most amazing little kitten. But the last update thing that I have for you guys is the first week of January, she got super, super sick. And I basically thought that I was losing her. And it was on top of everything going on with Randy. It was another like last straw sort of thing for me. She basically got a really, really bad virus. And I'm happy to say she's okay now. Like, I feel like I should give the like parental warning of like, she's fine, but here's what happened. She um, basically stopped eating for like four days. Um, on day three, we ended up bringing her to the vet because she started throwing up blood. That's a really bad thing. And of course it was on a Sunday. So we had to bring her to an emergency vet, got a whole bunch of blood work and scans and x-rays and everything done. Um, and everything came back fine. And we brought her back the next day because she was still throwing up, still not eating and everything. This kitten has turned into the most expensive pet I've ever owned. And I've owned horses, and that's saying something. After two really, really stressful days of her throwing up blood, not eating, not drinking, planning on having her hospitalized, um, we finally got her on an appetite stimulant that got her eating. We finally got her on anti-nausea stuff that helped just to help her like kick the virus out of her system. Nothing ultimately came back as being definitively wrong with her, but I have started seeing at work, like at the rescue, there are a lot of cats who also have the same thing. So whether I brought it to work or I brought it home from work, I don't know but she is okay now. I'm happy to report that Cricket can still remain in these videos as a favorite thing of mine. I just adore her to pieces. She is the snuggliest little thing. I didn't know if she was going to grow out of it as she got older, but the first thing in the morning, as soon as she sees you, she just gets so excited. She just meows and purrs, and she literally wakes me up in the morning by laying on my shoulder and just putting her cheek against my cheek and purring really loudly. And my heart explodes every single morning. I can't handle it. She's so freaking cute. So she is probably going to be a forever favorite, but I feel like right now that was also another update to give you guys of what else has been going on in my stressful life recently. But long story short, all of that was a lot of caretaking or I guess caregiving on my part where I was just helping to take care of Randy. I was helping out at work to try and cover all of the shifts and also help take care of my sad sick little kitten. Well, I kind of have been reaching a burnout point when it comes to me and self-care. I know self-care has been a very big trendy thing to talk about recently, but like the need is real right now for me. Um, as somebody who is very introverted, it's been very stressful because I feel like I've been surrounded by people and events constantly for the past month, which also goes hand in hand with the holidays. So it's just a lot. And I've been feeling the like burnout coming on. So I have been taking a lot of time to just kind of like spend a little bit of time on my own or find things that are helping me. So the first thing that I want to talk about, like physical thing that I want to talk about in this favorites video is a weighted blanket. So in case you guys didn't know, I have pretty bad anxiety. I have pretty severe social anxiety. Um, so I have kind of always tried things whenever something new pops up that is supposed to help with anxiety, just because mental illness is starting to become a very mainstream talked about topic. Um, so when the whole trend of weighted blankets came out, I was skeptical because the whole concept of that 
freaked me out. I thought it was going to have the complete opposite effect where um, if you put something on you that's really heavy and covers your entire body, I thought I was going to feel smothered. I thought I was going to feel like I couldn't breathe and it was just going to escalate the situation. It has had the opposite effect. I am a very, very light sleeper and I move around a lot in my sleep. I've always been that way. And as I've gotten older, I've kind of realized that like, if you wake yourself up at night, my brain just kicks on and I am just awake. Like there is no falling back asleep anymore in my life. And it sucks because I'm tired all the time. Um, weighted blankets though have been a game changer for me. Like having that on me, I think keeps me from like fidgeting in my sleep and waking myself up and starting that process. I sleep straight through the night. And y'all, I needed that so badly in this past month because this past month and a half has been so exhausting for me, just mentally, physically, every in every way. It's been really trying for me. So being able to get a full night's sleep was a game changer for me. So if you are on the fence about trying them because they are very expensive, I got mine on sale with a coupon, I think, but it was still like $40 or something like that. Um, I'm gonna highly recommend them. So at the same time of me not really uploading or doing anything on booktube, I also kind of was just taking a break from YouTube as a whole. I wasn't really watching many videos, but I did find a channel in December who is like one of my new favorite booktubers. Her name is Brie Hill. I'm gonna leave her channel linked down below. I'm also gonna leave her Instagram linked down below and her blog. She kind of does all of the things, but she is my new favorite YouTuber. She is a romance booktuber slash blogger slash bookstagrammer, and I just adore her content. She also does like decorate with me videos, so she has like the perfect crossover of the type of videos that I like watching. It's about romance books and reading romance books, but also it's kind of lifestyle stuff like holiday decor and decorating and like just being a, a human and living life and filming it. I've just been loving her so much. I think her channel just recently hit a thousand subs. So I want you all to go over and subscribe to her and love her and help boost her channel because I think she deserves so much more. She's like my favorite person to watch. She's one of those people that I will watch every video that she uploads and I just adore her so much. So go give her some love. And I guess the last favorite thing that I want to talk about um, in this video that is kind of a random thing that's not bookish whatsoever is my crock pot. <laughs> Every like fall to winter season, I switch over to doing a lot of crock pot recipes, like a lot of people do, like slow cooker recipes, because you're looking for like heartier, hot meals at the end of the day. Um, but having a slow cooker is like a lifesaver when you're dealing with a lot of stuff in your life, like just being able to put something in and let it go for the day and actually have a nice, lovely, wholesome meal at the end of the day without like the stress of making it is wonderful. And I have been trying so many recipes and it's been my favorite thing. I found like the Swedish meatball recipe that's amazing. I make like a chicken and biscuits recipe that is like the simplest thing ever. If you guys have any just like dump recipes, for the slow cooker, please let me know because I'm kind of constantly on the look for them. The easier, the better, like as little prep as possible, but I've been making so much like chili. Just some good, wholesome, happy soul food has been life-saving for me recently because it's been very stressful. So that has been a favorite of mine. I don't even know if I should include that in this video, but I have been loving my slow cooker recently, so I'm going to. So, okay, I've been rambling for way too long. If you guys have stuck it out for this entire video, kudos to you. Um, thank you guys for sticking with me for this whole like hiatus that I've taken. Um, I don't really plan on taking any more breaks, but again, this one was kind of unplanned. So <laughs> I'm sorry for that, but I am back. I am in the process of kind of back filming all of my end of the year videos, like wrap ups, favorite books, worst books, all of those things. If you have any videos that you guys would really like to see from me as far as like end of the year, beginning of the year videos, let me know down in the comments because I've kind of been trying to catch up on all my friends ones and I'm like, oh shoot, I still need to film that. So those will be coming your way. Let me know if there are any specific ones that you would like to see. Um, I'll probably bring back Napoleon and the goats picking my TBR in February because as I'm filming this, we're already halfway through the month of January. So I don't think it's like worth filming at this point. So thank you guys so much for sticking with me through this whole bumpy ride of the past six weeks. But that's what's been going on. I hope you guys understand. And I'm looking forward to filming more videos for you guys. So I will see you in those.